everyone, it's Chico. Hi, it's Moritz. So it's been a couple of months already and we've made a ton of progress on the truck. More footage than we can even keep up with. So thanks for following along. Plenty of more to come up, but let's see real quick what we've done so far. All right, let's get started. So despite the uncertain times, this project has been a blessing in disguise. It's kind of kept us sane this whole quarantine. So Mort is going to start with a quick tour of the outside of the truck. Yeah, not, not really as much has changed. We removed the ladder holders. The ugly blinds are gone. There was another ladder holder. Um, we got all our stuff outside currently so we can work on the inside. That's there. <laughs> So as you can see, we've done a lot of work on the inside. Everything is starting to come to shape. The framing has been started for the bed area. We're not 100% done, but we've got our countertops in measured cut, and we're kind of using it. The butcher blocks are here, they're in, and the butcher block on the other side is here as well. We're using them as workstations right now because our truck is doubling as a workshop slash storage, so tripling. Um, but this is where the shower is going to be and sink. Um, but before I get too ahead of myself, let's dive into the evolution of our drawings and the ideas that we had for this van. All right, YouTube, I'm coming at you with a PowerPoint slide. Yeah, you heard me right, but I promise you it's going to be great fun. So let's start off with a throwback. This is a picture of Qbert from early February. Notice the snow on the ground. It was really, really cool. And this is what Qbert looked like from the back. The arrow is still on at this point. Um, we've since removed it. And if you missed it in our last episode, go check it out. All of our project plans were done on Tinkercad. It was super easy, very streamlined, and it's a program that's made for elementary school students. I figured, hey, if a uh, six-year-old can do it, I can do it too. Before we get started, let's give you an orientation. The left side of the image is the back of the truck. So let's hop one photo back. So left side is going to be the back of the truck and the right side is going to be the front of the truck. And we've termed that bulkhead area, which sits over the cab as the alcove. Here is our first drawing, which is with the kitchen in the rear. And we thought we would do this because it would really open up the space. You know, you spend most of your day um, cooking when you are actually in the van. So we thought that, you know, we wanted to be able to see out into nature whenever we were prepping breakfast or making dinner. This would feature a middle area, which would be our sleeping area. And that would double as a dinette where we could entertain and have dinner. The main issue with this is that every single night you'd have to set up a bed, and then in the morning you'd have to tear it down and so on and so forth. But the biggest issue here was that because the kitchen was in the back with the fridge in the back, most of our weight was gonna be in the back of the truck. So we had to pivot a little bit here and we didn't pivot very far. We ended up swapping the kitchen with the bed slash seating area. We wanted to make it a little bit more creative by coming up with like an L-shaped counter. So I could be over here chopping my vegetables and Moritz could be over here doing whatever he needs to do with the vegetables after they're chopped and so we would just hang it around that little peninsula. All of our storage was going to be over in the alcove and it turns out that in the alcove you could only have like 120 kilos or something like that. So that didn't work out very well for us. Q, mid kitchen design, number two. And now we've relocated the bed to over the cab in the alcove and that lets us have permanent benches in the back um, which would add a lot more storage we didn't love the fact that from the hatch all the way to the back door the front doors with both of the l-shaped counters and the benches it kind of added a little bit of a weird feng shui you know i'm not a very clumsy person having to dash between the two would mean a lot of hip injuries for me and one key thing that we had forgotten where do we put our bikes our next design was literally just pull out something and stick flex in and call it a day. But uh, you know, the L counter is still there. We still didn't love it. Which brings us to the current day, which is a design that we've mostly settled on and are building towards. 
you'll see we have a permanent bed. We've got a little shower and wet room, which would feature a composting toilet. Next to that is a mini counter, which will have the sink there. And that allows us to have both the water system for the shower as well as the sink on the same side of the vehicle. Next to that is a whole pillar just dedicated to storage. And the best part about this is our little dinette and that's going to be a permanent fixture. Cool thing is it's going to be elevated by about 20 to 25 centimeters and that's about a foot high. Underneath there we'd be able to tuck things like tents or camping chairs or yoga mats that wouldn't really fit comfortably elsewhere. The fridge would be on the right side, you don't really see it here, but it's going to be under the counter on the right side of the vehicle. And um, yeah, we thought we'd first share our design so that you can see what we're building towards. If you've got any comments, any suggestions, any concerns with our design, if you really think something's gonna fall apart or it's really not gonna work, then leave a comment below, message us on Instagram. So thank you for uh, getting through this PowerPoint of mine. Let's get back to the video. All right, let's see. I've gotta remove some rust. Got these fancy Darth Vader mask. I'm gonna buckle up with some more stuff. Safety glasses, very important. Here I go. Also important. After stripping down the truck, we found pockets of rust under the insulation. Moritz went to work rust proofing the box to prevent any further damage. This also helped us identify where the leaks were so we could properly seal them. Next, we installed our fantastic fan. I started by measuring the cutout from the inside by drilling two pilot holes diagonal from each other. To cut the hole, I used a reciprocating saw, which was definitely the wrong tool as you see. We should have used the jigsaw instead. Oh dear, I don't want to break it. We have a hole. forward after minor adjustments. Does it fit? Uh, oh, it fits. <laughs> nice! All Your right. measurements originally were way too exact. Uh, yes. <laughs> you get a thumbs up. <laughs> that took a bit. Since the metal frame was so flimsy, the fan was screwed into a wooden frame inside the box. We used Dicor self-leveling sealant to seal up the screws and latches. Our next project was to work on the solar. We purchased 4 energy 100 watt panels from Amazon. Make sure you open the box and check that the panels are the correct ones. Two of ours were labeled with 100 watts on the box, but they were actually the older 92 watt models. Using aluminum L bars purchased from Home Depot, I custom built a frame to fit the solar panels onto our roof rack. 
All four were mounted using screws and rivets so that neither wind nor burglars could take a hold of them. The whole contraption was 32 kilograms or 71 pounds. And luckily our neighbors had just stepped out to go pick up some dinner so they helped us out. The heater works. Oh yeah, temperature set, heater enabled. How much money did we save? Uh, this thing? What did we say? It's like 1500. No, I thought it's even 4000. 4000? New, yeah, yeah. Like these ones are ridiculously expensive. How much would we have spent though? Uh, <laughs> 150, <laughs> maybe 200. <laughs> so we saved 200. But this is way better than the 200 Chinese ripoff, I think. Woohoo! Woo Ooh, that is more. It is more. Is this like quieter than what the other models would have been like? Mmm, maybe. I don't know, they are usually pretty loud. It sounds like it's gonna explode. It's still revving up. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's so nice. And Let's see. Touch it. Mm. Ooh, ooh, that's ooh, that's hot. It's hot, yes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Based on popular demand, we're gonna demo to you how the pee jug works. So let's get started. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> what? And then. Basically, pee here. And it comes out through here. Oh, it actually, oh, it splashed me. I like, tried to get really close and it splashed me. <laughs> so you only got the residual pee. Oh, gross, don't say that. Oh. I'm cutting it. Mords was so excited to take out the tube that he didn't wait for me to take a video. So we only have photos here. Here he is struggling to tug the thing out. Are you excited? So excited. How excited? I'm very excited. <laughs> this is about as much excitement I can get out of a German, right? <laughs> well, the camera is. In front of the camera, what are you? This is how you behave behind the camera too. <laughs> There's no difference. <laughs> So we are ready to put in the floor insulation, put in some spaces, then we have some insulation panels, and on top we will put some... Are you checking to see if the microphone is on? Yes. <laughs> it's uh, on! Why don't you trust me? Uh, plywood gets on the top. We're just creating the frame now where the insulation... We got the same sheet panel insulation, um, and on top of that plywood, and then flooring. That left. We powered through the floors because it was such a boring project. By the end of day two, we had all the spacers and insulation installed. We were so stoked to be done after the last piece of plywood had just been screwed in. But as you can see, the floors are moving. We didn't put any horizontal beams underneath. So hopefully um, the floor on top of that will add a little bit more rigidity. 
but it's not going to be perfect. We'll just have to live with it. Well, we couldn't sleep that night knowing that this might come back to bite us. So that's when we decided we needed to add additional horizontal spaces. The next morning, we undid all the work on the plywood and started carving. <laughs> what do you say to this? <laughs> Chica's hungry. I'm so, so angry. angry. <laughs> Look, one more piece. We're so oh, close. And then we're done with the goddamn floor. We're so close, but. I think we made a good decision to like rip it up and do it properly with um, the cross beams for because sure, yeah. we'd be paying for it otherwise, like, may as well. It actually wasn't as hard as we thought it was going to be. No. Just, it's like really windy, so every time you cut something, all the little styrofoam pieces just blow everywhere, so. Well, last piece. Last piece! <laughs> At this point, we were about six weeks in while juggling our full-time jobs. We'd spent 21,000 Canadian dollars, of which 14,000 was on the truck and 7,000 was on the build. We have a ton more details on our website. Although we learned a lot during this phase, it was tedious and the work itself was not that fun. We're really glad we're through it now and next month will be a lot more exciting. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. We hope you're staying safe and healthy and we'll see you on the road to pitches.